onto it. Now, before I get started on this video, I just wanna say thanks for actually watching this. Even though uh, a lot of the viewers who watch my stuff in the UK or in the US, I know are still under some form of lockdown conditions. And though here in NZ, we're basically at level one, so basically almost about bats and all, really. We just gotta keep an eye on things, stuff like that. And yeah. How are you? Never one clean take. That's going in, though. That's going in. Now, a couple of days ago, bought me some curved points. Not one, not two, but four. Four curved points. Now, there's a good reason. Um, in any of my older videos, you'll see I got this old passing loop section from about here to there. And at best, I can hold a free coach train in it with a small tank engine, which sucks. So, for bigger locomotives and bigger trains, I'm going to extend the loop from one end of the layout to the other. Hopefully, it works. But that just that does mean ripping up the point, ripping up all the existing track work as they're ready. Which, considering how well planted I have, some of it blows. But I got a feeling if I just start off with the four pins here, we might get some progress. So just pull these two front ones out first. And one. Oh, that was stuck in the. There we go. Two. And the cat's wondering what the heck's going on. Oh dear. I never get a clean shoot with the cat around. But yeah, basically it'll take forever if I just do the recording like this. So, what I'm gonna do is set the camera up somewhere in the room, aiming at the layout, and I think I sense a time lapse coming on. So, ah. Uh, I guess it's time. I guess it's time to finally start ripping up track and getting to work, shall we? In the catch, <laughs> I can't win.
So, as we can see, I got all the track I needed to rip up, I think, anyways, uh, ripped up. So, in theory, all I have to do is just clean up all this uh, dirt and dust that's been piled up between the sleepers after all this time. Probably have to fill in the holes where the dropper wires used to be. That's no problem. And then figure out the new track plan. And that cat's noisy as heck. Can't move that little rat. Now, joking aside though, if I have to rip up any more track, it's just a simple case of plying up the uh, sleepers, taking the pins out, and then putting the pins in a wagon. The reason I'm using that this as leverage is I find it easier. I find it easy. Simple. Right, be back with you in a moment. Okay, bit of a clown up on my end because I forgot. In putting these wafer fin packers in between the baseboards, so that way after the tracks cut, I can take these out, put the tracks back, boards back together properly, I get a nice clean seam. Yeah, I forgot that what I do that end affects this end, so put a packer in. And now I'm having to relay track here too, so that's that is an unexpected issue. Especially with the gap between the edge of the board and the rails is different here than it is here. So yeah. That's unexpected and annoying. Now hopefully it doesn't affect my work too much, so I better get back to it. Oh dear. Well, this simple passing loop idea has drastically backfired into something a lot bigger. As the only piece of track that remains from the old setup is that little curve up there. Which means all the other track is ripped up and this is going to be a two part video. So until next time, this is Up on Ord saying stay tuned.